Hey there, hope you're going well. I'm Jade the Beamer and today I am super excited to talk to you about my first ever audiobook. So I always knew that audiobooks existed but I didn't think they were for me. Like I thought I wouldn't be able to digest if someone else was reading to me. Because in school if um, I was reading something out loud I could never really like properly digest what that was. So I didn't think audiobooks would be for me, like I always just preferred the physical book. But oh my gosh, has it changed the game completely. So I signed up and listened to my first audiobook, and that is Artemis by Andy Weir. I really wanted my first audiobook to be a book that I wanted anyway, um, that I was thinking about buying a physical copy of. So I wanted it to be something that interested me. But when I saw that it was narrated by Rosario Dawson, that sealed the deal. I really love Rosario. She uh, is a character in the Marvel TV shows, uh, Jessica Jones, Daredevil, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, all of them. She's also in The Mandalorian. Um, I just really admire her as an actress and a person and uh, she is such a good narrator. So yeah, I listened to that. I breezed through it and now I'm on my second audiobook which is The Sandman by Neil Gaiman. I am hating it pretty much. Rarely hate books but I despise it to the point where I'm thinking about getting rid of my other Neil Gaiman books because I'm so disappointed. But I won't get into that too much, we're here to talk about Artemis which I rated a 5 out of 5 stars one of my favourite books now. Oh my goodness. And Andy Weir also wrote The Martian, which is just behind me here. And it's one of my favourite books of all time. It's about this guy that gets stranded on Mars and he has to survive. Mark Watney is the protagonist and he's probably one of my favourite fictional characters ever. But oh my goodness. Jazz Bashara is the protagonist in Artemis. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if I like it better than The Martian. And that is so, like, controversial for me to say because The Martian was my everything. Oh, I don't know. I love it so much. So if you don't know what Artemis is about, basically Jazz Bashara is a smuggler on Artemis, which is the first human colony on the moon. And it's basically about how she finds out there's, like, a crime conspiracy and she winds up being a part of it and there's murder and it becomes so much more than she'd bargained for and she has to find a way to fix it all. Oh, it's so good. I loved the story and Rosario Dawson is just amazing at narration. She does such a good male voice. You don't even think about how she's doing all these different voices and accents and she just gets it spot on and it's not disrespectful, it's not stereotypical. She does obviously her female voice, her male voice, she does a Ukrainian accent, a Russian accent, a, a Kenyan accent, a Saudi Arabian accent, like it's just so good. She tells it in such a beautiful way and I could really see that she was jazz. Uh, it was just such a good audiobook experience and it really opened me up to like this new way of reading. So I'm always going to be having an audiobook that I'm reading all the time. It's such a good way to spend time that you'd be doing other stuff like driving. It's just such a good way to fill that time with reading and it's really going to help me with my TVRs and stuff. Changed my world. <laughs> We're in my NASA shirt for this. So Artemis came out in 2017 and the audiobook is 8 hours and 57 minutes. Breezed through that, no problem. And like I said, I rated it a 5 out of 5 stars or a 95%. I really can't fault it. <laughs> Uh, under prose I wrote, is it better than the Martian? Question mark. I love the characters and the heists. And under cons I wrote, nothing. <laughs> That's pretty much all I can tell you without spoiling you. I'm going to be getting into Artemis now. Let's go. <laughs> if you haven't read it, leave now. Listen to it or read it. Come back and we can discuss, okay? Okay. Goodbye people that haven't read Artemis. Go read it and come back. Goodbye. I freaking love Jazz Bashara. She's so snarky and clever and tough and she's just so cool. She reminds me of a mixture between Jessica Jones 
and Mark Watney and I just love that so much. So there's Svoboda who is the like chemist engineer and I just really loved how like solid their friendship was, like how he was always there for her, always willing to help her out and like how how strong that friendship was and how it transitioned into a romance like I was hoping for that and we got it and I was like yes I ship it this provider is so cute as well oh my goodness have you tried the condom Jasmine <laughs> oh hello so we start off the novel with as failing her EVA test so she wants to be an EVA master so she can go out onto the moon and give tours and get more money because her main goal is to be rich and I support that but she just fails it and she's so angry and I just love how we start off the book with that that anger so in order to get more money for herself because she's really poor she's a porter which is like a male man on the moon on the side she smuggles in stuff which is bad but that's what she's got to do she's got to feed herself so she smuggles in something for this rich Russian guy called Trond and he's with this um, businessman called Jin Chu and he has this mysterious package labelled Zaffo and she sees it and she's like uh, immediately suspicious. Trond hires her to sabotage this aluminium company called Sanchez Aluminium and it's because the production of aluminium creates oxygen as a byproduct and there's so much oxygen that just gets made and wasted and he wants to be the sole like owner of that and drive out the other business so she agrees to sabotage that company and she goes on this like quest to eliminate their harvesters so they can't harvest any more oxygen and she does it, but she leaves one behind, so she failed on her mission. And then the unexpected happens, Trond gets killed. And when she was like walking into his mansion and like the door was open, I was like, okay, like something's up. And then she sees the blood on the wall and she's immediately like, nope, nope, nope. It's so realistic. Like the protagonist sees that something's wrong and they freaking leave. Like that's what anyone would do. Oh my God, it was so funny. So it turns out that Trond was killed by a Brazilian mobster. So they're the ones who actually own Sanchez Aluminium. And so Tron's dead, his bodyguard's dead, and Tron's fortune is left to his daughter. I just really love how she was like, nah, I don't need this gig. And as soon as Tron offered her money, she's like, okay, I'm in. <laughs> On her way back from her failed mission, she has to find a way to sneak back into the city because they saw her on cameras and they know that like someone's been sabotaging this company. She makes it to an airlock and who's guarding it but her old bestie, Dale. So she hates Dale because Dale stole her boyfriend, basically. She was dating this guy called Tyler that she really loved and Tyler is gay and um, Dale kind of stole him away from her and so that's why Jazz hates Dale. So there's all this murder going on, Jazz fears that she's going to be next so she has to go into hiding while also trying to figure out what's going on. She locates Jin Chu and like steals his um, sample of Zaffo, which turns out to be a fiber optic cord that will really revolutionize like communication. So it's worth billions. And Savoida analyzes it for her and he's like, look how cool this is, it's so awesome. And she's like, come on, just like tell me what it's for. So eventually she locates Jin Chu and hopefully they can meet up and kind of see what's going on. But he betrays her to Alvarez, the killer of Trond. She's saved eventually because she like outsmarts them. And Rudy, who's Artemis's police officer, comes and like arrests them. And Rudy's had it out for Jazz because she and her old boyfriend accidentally started a fire and they were doing drugs in her dad's welding shop. So her dad's a welder, one of the best welders, and they basically trashed his shop and like burnt it with these drugs and Rudy like knew that she did something wrong but she, he can't prove it because all the evidence burned. They don't have a good relationship and her dad thought she was irresponsible and like rude and stuff and they don't have a good relationship. So there's all this stuff going on and the kind of leader of Artemis and Googie calls her into her office and <laughs> And Jazz figures out that she's the one that's behind all of this, that she knows about Zaffo, but she doesn't want it in the hands of criminals. When when Ngugi pulled out that gun in the office, I was like, 
whoa <laughs> i have to make up a plan to eliminate sanchez which means destroying like their heating plant he guys like recruits everyone and gets them to meet at the table and i just think that was so cool like the avengers of artemis so there's the orphaned girl lenny who is rich and is gonna pay jazz there's Voboda. there's uh amar who is her dad the welder there's dale her friend who she's grudgingly like trying to form a friendship with in return for him not turning her in and there's bob the eva master that failed her test at the beginning. Oh, it's so cute when Svoboda liked her dad. I also really like how religion was included. So Amar is Muslim and he like finds ways to pray every day and Jazz isn't religious but she like finds ways to play with that as a disguise and everything. So I thought the inclusion of religion was really interesting. So they make up this elaborate plan to destroy the Sanchez smelter and they get everyone out and the smelter's gonna blow. The creator of of Sanchez aluminum Loretta is there and she's gonna die if she doesn't leave and they start fighting and Jess is like we don't have time for this rubbish and so they grudgingly go back to Artemis and they find that everybody in the city is asleep so there's just Dale, Jazz and Loretta Sanchez in this like kind of moon rover thing everyone in the city is asleep so like i think ten thousand people or something including svoboda her dad like everybody and they find out that when they destroyed the smelter chloroform got released into the city so we're like oh that's fine like chloroform isn't that bad they're just sleep and loretta's like no it's toxic like in an hour that we're gonna be dead and we're like oh my <laughs> God, how did this heist become a rescue mission for the entire city? So she goes on this like journey throughout the city trying to gather what she needs and they open up these valves for the oxygen that Trond had stored away. There's one last valve and they just can't tug it open and it's so sad because Dale's like really like pulling it and trying and but he can't open it he's crying because everyone's gonna die because they can't open this one valve jazz while she was moving throughout the city got attacked by alvarez that broke out of jail so they have a fight with a pipe and she like knocks him out and stuff and so she's like okay i have to sacrifice myself so she pops open her like hamster ball bubble on the moon and wedges it in and that opens the valve but she's like on the moon exposed so we think that she's gonna die <sighs> when the narration stopped for a sec and i was like oh my god mark watney could never <laughs> so she wakes up and i'm like oh my god she can't see and i'm like okay like is she blind like is that the impact the moon had on her it turns out she's all right she's just a bit sore and sunburned and apparently she lasted on the moon for three minutes without dying now here is where i have to like doubt the book I, un I trust the science behind everything else. I trust the logic. But like, how does someone survive in space for three minutes? I thought that as soon as you were in space, your eyeballs like popped out and your blood boiled and you just can't breathe and like you just die. <laughs> I thought that was immediate, so I really don't understand. And I know that Jazz is like used to the moon's gravity and stuff like that, but like... Is that possible? But anyway, they save the city and with Lene's money, she buy buys her dad a workshop to make up for trashing his old one. I just love the elaborate nature of Jazz's plans. Oh, it's so funny. On a scale from one to invade Russia in winter, how stupid is this plan? <laughs> So Ngugi is going to deport her because she like committed a crime by putting the whole city to sleep in her heist. And she's like, nope, <laughs> you're not going to deport me. So Ngugi takes all of her money that she got from Lene as a fine for to the city. And in return, Jazz also has to control the smuggling that comes into Artemis so that nothing dangerous gets in. Because she's a smuggler, she's a criminal but she's a moral criminal. And throughout the book, we get these like letters that she's been sending to this pen pal on Earth called Kelvin, who she's never met, but he works in Kenya, which is where the whole space Artemis empire came from, which I think is really cool. And he's so nice. And um, she tells him to invest in Zappho. So they're gonna be rich, yo. I love the location of the moon. I think it's so cool. I love how funny this book is. I love how there's an underlying theme of business like how everything is about money and how like how corrupt it is when she's recovering in the hospital she and Svoboda kiss and I'm like yeah <laughs>
she and Dale have a good relationship now and she like offers to have lunch with him and Tyler so it's like healing that past trauma and it's just so good. I love all of the characters, I love the like plot, it ended so well, I just can't say enough about this book. Those were all my thoughts, please leave yours in the comments below, I'd love to discuss it with you. What's your favourite part? Who is your favourite character? Did you listen to the audiobook? What did you think of it? Did you like Rosario Dawson's narration like I did? Did you like it better than The Martian? I really don't know. It's so close. I'd have to reread The Martian to definitively say. I'm Jade the Beamer. I upload every Monday about pop culture, mainly books, TV shows and movies, but also writing, poetry, board games and video games. So if you enjoyed this review, please hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed down below. It means a lot and it means I can keep making content for you. So thank you very much if you're already subscribed. Thank you so much for watching and coming with me on this journey. Take care and I'll catch you next time, you little moon rocks. Goodbye!